and welcome to another episode of the Mission TV show. Today it's the last day um, before the Sabbath. And so today we've got a lot of amazing interviews lined up for you. And what's beautiful is that I've just met a new person that uh, our dear friend uh, and co-worker Kirk uh, Van Buren signed up. And I'm excited about this because I'm just learning about his ministry and the work that he's involved with in a city called Melbourne, Australia. And uh, Brother Johnny Wong, pastor? Brother. Elder. Brother pastor, brother Johnny Wong, a yes. lay member. Yes, that's right. Is involved with a church plant, mm -hmm. a lay-led church plant. Yep. Not only lay-led, but young person lay-led yes. church plant. Yes. And uh, what's your age, normal age group in this church? Well, our church has about 70% that is under 35 years old, young people, young mm -hmm. adults. Really? Mm -hmm. And what's so special about the location, about this being in, actually in Melbourne? Well, thank you, John, for that question. It's a good question. You know, our church in Melbourne is uh, a young church. It was uh -huh. started by young people aged 19 to 22 years old. Mm. About uh, 20 years ago, it, um, um, sorry, about 10 years ago, these young people said, we got to reach our friends in the city. Mm. They moved into the city. They are in a high-rise apartment. And we got to reach all these hundreds and thousands of people in there. And uh, they got some old folks like us, you know, <laughs> myself and my wife and another couple and another friend. Uh -huh. Five of us with 15 young people. Uh -huh. They begin to reach out 10 years ago. And today there is three churches there and a total attendance of about 300 people. Wow. So the Lord has blessed. The so Lord these God. young people <coughs> moved into the city, mm -hmm. found a place and started holding a church? Well, you know, it's very hard to find a place in the city because yeah. most cities, uh, we don't, Adventist members don't live in the city. Most people live away from the city. Uh -huh. But yet we are told in uh, Tess Ellen White's writing that mission to the city, work for the cities is necessary. And we have come to a point where cities are the new mission fields, <laughs> where we are more people in urban dwelling than they are in rural dwelling. So these young people were university students. We have six university students in that city. Uh -huh. And they begin to um, mingle with their friends and they say, you know what, we're going to start small groups. And we call it care groups, C-A-R-E, mm. Christ, Attitude, Reflect in Everybody uh -huh. groups, where young people get together in small groups. But we started off by revival and prayer. We intentionally spent about eight months in prayer and revival. Wow. And we, we wanted them to study the book of Acts, study the book of evangelism and gospel workers. And they begin to get a sense of who they are, seven days. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but no problem, I, I thought I heard you say that these young people are starting out with Ellen White books? They studied the book of Acts and then they okay. studied the book Evangelism so, by Alan G. White wow. and the book Gospel Workers by Alan G. White. These are the blueprints. So they're not just going in and, and having a contemporary church service and having fun and popcorn and eating donuts and coffee in the morning. You know what? If you want to take that method, um, you're <laughs> never going to outdo Hollywood. <laughs> never going to outdo Hollywood. And we don't have that wow. purpose. Our purpose is to proclaim the three angels' message. When the young people saw the book of Acts, the passion of the New Testament church and the methods of the New Testament church, they say it's not entertainment, it's not gimmicks, it's not trying to use contemporary, you know, a fancy chirograph worship to Lights attract and people. Smoke and yeah, but it's all about relationship. It's all wow. about building friendship. It's about what Jesus said um, to me, the, and Anna White teaches, mingle with the people, desire their good. Right and then beat them to follow. And it's all about relationships. So if you come wow. to a gateway church, you will find it's all about building relationship. And in the context of this small group, this care group where they have belonging, in the context of belonging, people find that they're open to believing. Then wow. they begin to open their heart to learn the gospel. Right. So from one care group to a second one, to a third one, and by the time we grew to four care groups, the Lord led us to plant the first church. Really? Led by young people, planted by young people. Okay, so how many churches does the Adventist Church have in the city of Melbourne? Right in the heart of the city, no. But in the suburban areas, we have, you know, our closest church back then was about eight kilometers, maybe four miles away from the city. Okay. Um, uh, another one, maybe another 10 miles away. But the, we had churches in the suburban, but right in the heart of the center of the city, when there are high-rise apartments, mm. there were no church for over 120 years until this church was planted. So there never has been a church? No. 
So then the young people came in and with the moving, the deep Bible study, yep. deep uh, study into the methods Pray, yeah. that, are, that, are, that are taught to us by the Holy Spirit. Yes. They started this church plant and it's successful. Amen. The Lord bless. Now we have seen over 170 baptisms. Amazing. And the and these these baptisms are from people in the urban center. They are from the urban centers, not only just from Australia, but from around the world. Because, okay. particularly countries also from Asia, because Melbourne is an education center. We have six universities in this heart of the city, mm -hmm. and we have seen young people come to study in Australia. Became. Seventh-day Adventist Christian, okay. they go home not just with a university degree, a piece of paper, but they go home with an eternal degree in their heart. Wow. And they go back to countries in Asia, uh -huh. India, Thailand, China, Communist China, Buddhist Thailand, Indonesia. Hindu India, Muslim Indonesia. They go back <laughs> and they form one care group. Two K group, three K groups, four K group. We're beginning to see hundreds in K group now all over Asia. Wow! So yeah. these care groups are basically a church planting movement Amen. that one person can start. Amen. And a lay people can start, but you have <laughs> to be systematically trained. Okay. Uh, we did not just say go launch it. When they came to our church in Gateway, and the Lord allowed our church to be like a, a church of Antioch, where young people can be trained and they can be deployed to other parts of Asia and Australia. Okay, so with this training then, have mm -hmm. you developed resources? Yeah, I'd like to share that. There are yes. a couple of resources that may be useful to our friends who may have the same passion and desire to learn. Mm -hmm. And we've made this freely available. One resource Wonderful. is called, uh, this DVD resource, it is called uh, Care Group and Discipleship Training. Okay. And this is 12 e-learning videos. It's available in English, Korean, German, um, um, Chinese. And um, wow. there are 12 e-learning videos, 24 minutes each, plus workbooks and PowerPoint. And they will systematically learn about the overview of this approach that is based on the book of Acts and evangelism Wonderful. and gospel workers. Uh -huh. And then um, the the, the lessons for discipling is this resource. It's called, it's called the Discipleship Pack. It's written by a seven-day Adventist pastor uh -huh, in uh -huh. Chicago. Okay. And uh, it's called Fast Discipleship Pack. Uh -huh. And an excellent resource for um, retaining. When somebody is baptized in the Adventist church, generally we don't disciple them. Right. We give them roles and things to do. But in our yeah. church, we use this from the U.S. We're in Australia. We go to the U.S. to get this stuff. <laughs> we use this tool. And today, after 10 years, John, uh -huh. we have a 90% retention rate wow. of the people we baptize. That's unheard of. It's unheard of anywhere in the world. Because so, the Lord taught us this model of discipling in the New Testament church. So you have large evangelistic campaigns? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every year. And then and then the people that come in, you disciple them through this. Absolutely. After they're baptized, we don't leave them on their own and say, well, good luck to you. Here's yeah. the Sabbath school lesson, survive <laughs> yeah. the church. No, we are very intentional. They, they go through a very systematic discipling process. We have a spiritual mentor, a spiritual guardian, we call it. Okay. They body, a spiritual buddy. Uh -huh. And they will walk through with them the step by step to build the word of God in their life, to, wow. to memorize, to meditate, to learn how to do morning devotion, mm. to then learn to share a witness, and then mm. learn to set up care groups mm. to reach your friends and your family. Man, I want to come join. Yeah. Well, we'd love to see you come to Australia to visit <laughs> Since us. it's an international church, I guess I'd be Very welcome, right? Multicultural, it was in English, but we have 21 nationalities. Really? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. You know, I have to, uh, as in, in my own wife and my, my testimony, one of the reasons we're in the church today is because when we started coming back to church, yes. an elderly couple did what they called, they had a tucking ministry. Mm -hmm. You know how the mother comes in at night and tucks the child into bed? Yes. They would tuck us, which means they would invite us home after church, eat with us, talk wow. with us, wow. you know, encourage us to pray. Just like, just like made us part of their life, mm -hmm. uh, friendship. Yes. And that had such a power. We still consider them our spiritual father and mother. And, and it's so, so vital. This is so vital. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And it's obviously what Christ told us to do. Yes, and um, you know, when they, when they see it model in, in Gateway in Melbourne, Australia, uh -huh. these young people go to other parts of Australia and they do exactly the same. Uh -huh. They take, they take the, the resource they have, 
they don't have to go to seminary to be a soul winner. <laughs> they, just take, they take the resource and they go and step by step begin to disciple other young people in the church and build their spiritual life up. Because it's not about entertaining, it's about, it's about building them in the Word, it's about getting them into prayer life, getting them to be obedient to the Word, applying what they learn, and going out to share with their friends and neighbor. Wow. And they begin to do that, and I said the easiest way is to set up a home group, a care group. Mm -hmm. And when people feel the sense of being tucked in, yeah. that they are community, mm. they will say, why do you do this? Mm. Who mm. teach you this guy? And we will say, Jesus taught us this. <laughs> And they go, who is Jesus? And some of them are Buddhists, some of them are atheists. We have baptized many atheists, uh, many uh, Hindus. I'll tell you a story of a young man, a Hindu man. Mm. He came to our, uh, he met one of our church members on the bus. Mm. And the church member said, hey, why don't you come to my home group? Mm -hmm. And because he was very quiet, he seemed to be very downcast, this Hindu young man from mm. India. Mm -hmm. And he came. Because he thought, I'll just learn a bit of English first. Mm, mm. <laughs> but, you know, from the friendship, he began to notice these people were different. Mm. Uh, it's vegetarian food in the category. Why are Which, you guys eating healthy food? Yeah, yeah. Right? And then we brought them to a public evangelistic meeting. Wow. He came to a public evangelist thing because he had friendship through the care groups. Oh, okay, right. It wasn't a cold, it wasn't a, what we call a cold turkey contact. It was a friend that we brought to the meetings. Okay. He came to the meeting. At first, he rejected it because sure. he grew up in. Um, Christian schools in India and he ah. had some idea but his family were Hindu right he initially wasn't interested I, I, I asked him questions was it anything you're not sure of or unclear I said I'll let you meet the speaker he, and he met the speaker we made a one-on-one -on -one appointment and he asked thoughtful question to the speakers mm. and finally he asked the speaker um, if if uh, you think that everyone's gonna keep the Sabbath uh, then nothing will run in this world and the speaker said to him, obviously, young man, you're thinking. You have an interest. You know, I pray for you. And I pray that one year time, you'll be baptized. <laughs> and he was annoyed. He said, what would the speaker say that I'll be a baptized after one year? But true to the date, through the friendship care group, Bible study, one year later, this young man was baptized. Amazing. He left his job uh, in, in a top logistics company. After, when he was baptized, he felt the call of Jesus. Today, this young man is a pastor. Really? He's a pastor. In Australia? Or? In Australia. Amazing. He left a job with a logistics wow. company. And he has a burden for his, mm. his community, not just in Australia, but he has his family in India. Mm. Um, and he's, he's going out there doing mission in different parts of, of Asia as well. So this, this one little church, the first church ever in Melbourne, yes. is growing beyond its four walls. Mm -hmm. and affecting different countries around the world and different places in uh, in Australia as well. Yes. What a beautiful testimony. The Lord is it's lost the Lord's doing. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's the Lord's doing. We uh, we run our yearly training conference called AYC, Adventist Youth Con Conference or Adventist Youth for Christ. Okay. And we have close to a thousand people that come to our training program every year. Wonderful. It's a four day event, but they go back inspired. Uh -huh. But not just from Australia, they come from Asia. Uh -huh. And I can tell you a story about uh, young people going to Muslim Indonesia, the most populous Muslim country in the world. Wow. And they go home and they, they run care groups. Mm. They inspire other young people. Mm. And then uh, I just got a WhatsApp message just a month ago that two Muslims were baptized from the group. So these were Bible studies given by lay people. Amazing. Systematically trained. That's why our website to get this is called www.rightlytrain.org okay. okay. because Alan White says in evangelism in the book Education page 271 with an army of workers or youth rightly trained might furnish how soon the message of the crucified risen savior will go to the world rightly trained yes. the issue is not that there's no harvest in Asia <laughs> there's no harvest in Australia yeah. uh, we need to think in two mindsets number one we need to think beyond our borders. Uh, we, in Australia, we're very blessed with resources. Uh, Asia needs more resources too. We have a billion people plus, two billion people plus in our back door in Australia. Yes. We need to have a mindset that the, the everlasting gospel is not just in our four walls of our local church. Yes. We need to think a bigger and bolder vision for God. We cannot just be, be comfortable with this myopic little vision in our local church. Yes. And number two, 
it's not about giving to mission only financially. Mm. It's about how can we deploy missionaries. Amen. Amen. How maybe the missionaries ourselves, mm. not somebody else. We always say, "Oh, let me give to somebody to be a missionary." What yeah. about us? Yes. I'll tell you a story about a girl from Hong, uh, from Australia. Uh -huh. She's a medical doctor, a trained specialist, mm -hmm. and uh, she has a comfortable house, a comfortable accommodation in Australia. She is involved in our ministry. She's our care group, one of our care group leaders, one of the leaders of our church. She could do well in Australia, but she saw the mission to plant a new church in urban secular Hong Kong. This city has not planted the church for 20 years in this secular city of 8 million people. Right on the doorstep of China, yeah. has not planted the church for 20 years. This young lady says, we need to do something different. She took a job in Hong Kong as a doctor. Not okay. because it's a job, right? because it's a vision. Okay. God has put in her heart to go beyond her comfort zone uh -huh. and go uh -huh. and make disciples uh -huh. for Jesus. And she's there now and setting up groups and I'm coaching the team over there in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. uh, we've been coaching for a few years, uh -huh. uh, three, four years. Mm -hmm. And this September, 2015, from two person, now with 35 people, we're gonna plant a new church in Hong Kong. Lay people, lay driven, all under 30, 35 years old. Amazing. It's that's, amazing. That's what exciting. Yeah. So I want to um, uh, say that that website again for this training material. Mm -hmm. It's www.rightlytrained.org. So that's R I G H T L Y T R A I N E D dot O R G. Rightlytrained.org, and we'll put it up on the screen so mm -hmm. people can see it. And you can go there. Most people are watching this on their computers, so they yes. can go to that website, start looking at it as we can continue our interview here. You also have another website here uh, for your church. Yes, that's right. And so that is Gateway, G A T E Y, sorry, G, G A T E W A Y S D A, Gateway S D A dot O R G. So check that site out and see what they're doing. Um, they connect with the people that are there, uh, see what see what they're see what's being successful, mm -hmm. and and biblically based, spirit of prophecy based, yes, and just growing like. And I imagine that the people that are involved with this church that are mm -hmm. finding this gospel and this experience so precious mm -hmm. that they have this burden to share with others. Amen. They must find. They must be finding something special in Christ yes. that gives them that burden. So their lives must be fulfilled from the inside Yes, to, to be able to make these kinds of sacrifices and, and move forward with this kind of passion and yes. zeal. Yes. So I praise God for what you're doing. And I'd like to, Johnny, if you would be willing to make an appeal to our audience, yes. what you found in this experience, how that has changed your life and how you, and why and how you would recommend that to our viewers. Just want to thank God for what He is doing. You know, it is His work. We just, um, uh, Jesus said the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest. So prayer is key. Let's make, in the, let's make our first appeal that we deepen our prayer desire for, to be part of the harvest. We're not just any church in this world. We're just, we're, we're a final movement. Not a church, a movement to be part of this harvest. So let's pray. That's a deep need for us to pray. The second thing is that we need workers, and the workers are in the harvest, actually. You win one, you win two, they, and, but we don't just baptize them. Let me appeal to our, our speakers and evangelists and our pastors and our members that, that when we have newly baptized, let's train them to be workers because they are potential. And we use fast discipleship training process, and it's very effective. And train them. Don't just count baptism. Count how many people we have baptized that we have trained to be a worker for the harvest. And when we've done that, I think the Lord will bless us because when somebody's trained and baptized and, and they become a disciple of Jesus and they love Jesus, just naturally, the love of Christ constraineth us, the Bible says, it flows out of that. And we would desire to not just share in our, our neighborhood, but the rest of the world. Mm. Because we want Matthew 24, 14 to be fulfilled. Amen. That the gospel Amen. goes to the whole world and the end shall come. And doing it this way, where you're filled yourself, 
it flows out of you naturally. Yes. You are built up and, and you find sharing and witnessing and, and mission work enjoyable and, and life sustaining rather than life draining. And it's not a duty that you been imposed on you because your mom and dad wants to go to mission or, or, or your, your, your school friends are going and you want to go. Uh -huh. it, it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Uh, it should be more like, Lord, you bless me so much. Yeah. How can I give to your great love for us? Praise the Lord. Thank Praise you so Lord. much, Johnny, John. for coming in and inspiring us all. It's my blessing to be here. Oh, wonderful. And uh, thank you for joining us, too. And I hope that you're inspired as much as I am by this testimony of young people planting churches in inner cities, especially like Melbourne, where it's never been planted before. This is possible. And this is available to all of us. Each one of us can not only be able to do that work, but have that joy flowing through our hearts and lives. Until we see you again, God bless you from the Mission TV show live recorded here at the GC session on the exhibit hall floor in San Antonio. God bless.